Well, happy Sunday. It's Alicia at Dirt and Diamonds. I'm so glad that you clicked on this video. I know we're probably all tired of hearing about Michaela Nagara. So, we're not really talking about her today. We're going to talk about L'Oreal. Some uh, information that I found quite interesting. They're not the only ones trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. So, I know we are probably all tired of talking about Michaela Nagara, Mascara Gate, and all the things, L'Oreal. Um, it really is like every TikTok that comes up and in my shorts. And, of course, my feed is littered with videos on Michaela Nagara. And, honestly, at this point, I do feel bad for her. I have a lot of compassion in my heart for her just because I know that I, she did this to herself, but I cannot imagine. I know for certain, had she realized the real danger of doing this and the end result, but I mean, hey, that really is most people had they known the consequences of getting caught, they wouldn't have done it. So, will she get out of this and move forward? That remains to be seen. But today, we're talking about L'Oreal. So, Rich sent me the original TikTok of L'Oreal. I'm going to show it to y'all real quick, and then uh, we'll talk about that. So, as I'm watching this TikTok, I'm like, really? Very obvious. This model is wearing fake lashes. How can we expect more of Michaela when the owner of this mascara on their ads, they had very obvious fake lashes? So, I'm sure you've seen people, like, tweak Michaela's, like, the contrast, the um, lightness, the darkness, all of that. So, I took the video of L'Oreal's TikTok. I made a screenshot of just the eye. This is it. I tweaked the lightness and darkness and all of that. And, of course, you can see on the picture like these um like rainbow shaped lines those are from their video in the line in the middle on each side you can very straightforward see these shorter stubbier lashes in the background that are seemingly this model's real lashes it's astonishing to me and maybe I'm just a super naive consumer, and this has been very educational for myself. You know, like they used to say, don't believe anything you hear and half of what you see. I'm definitely more wiser, and hopefully as a whole, the consumers will be much more wiser, um, you know, after all of this, when we are making purchases. I do also think that this is a great opportunity for the Jen Loves and the Taylor Wins to continue move forward with complete transparency and honesty at all costs. Let that be the main objective in their videos, the James Welshes, the Robert Welshes, to where people would be more apt to endorse the products and purchase the products that they recommend because we feel like that we can really count on an honest review. So, I believe it was Dustin Daly had mentioned that L'Oreal had been in a previous scandal over false advertisement. If y'all do not watch Nick and 
dust in together. They are freaking hilarious. And when, I don't know, I think they smoked something, but this last video they did was so funny. Had a lot of great information in it as well, but it was hilarious. They're so funny. So anyway, I'm pretty sure it was Dustin that spoke about that previous scandal or whatever. So today I start looking and I'm like completely taken back by what I found. You know, not just one time, not just two times. And I'm sure had I looked longer than I did, there are so many cases that in, that they've had to take photos down from ads that were deemed false advertisement. So, the one that Dustin referenced was from 2008. And the Advertising Standard Agency in the UK ruled that L'Oreal must remove both the TV and the press ads for this campaign for the original telescopic mascara. So they did the same thing on the original telescopic. Like if the mascara is not that good, we just don't sell it. But obviously they felt the need to add false lashes to the campaign photos. And the UK's uh, advertising agency's like, no, it's not gonna work, take the ads down. So that was the one with Penelope Cruz in it. So in 2011, they had to take photos down from a campaign um, that were for a skincare ad that had Julia Roberts in it, and they were the photos were banned for being over airbrushed because in 2011 the NAD began banning photoshopped photos in an ad campaign which I don't know who all like enforces this, but obviously they're not doing a great job as well. So in 2013, L'Oreal took ads down for its Maybelline Volume Express line, which did include mascara or was mascara. And the funny part to this one is, it was brought up by P&G after the complaint, uh, they received a complaint and lost the challenge over their CoverGirl ad featuring Taylor Swift. So basically, CoverGirl was like, well, we're getting in trouble. We lost our appeal on that. So we're calling y'all out for these fake photos. Um, that was 2013. And so obviously this is just an industry standard to Photoshop and add lashes or whatever you need to. Um, you know, who knows what all, if we really knew the truth. So in 2014, L'Oreal agreed to settle with the Federal Trade Commission on charges of deceptive advertising about another skincare product. L'Oreal also made a statement saying there is, they feel there's nothing false or misleading about featuring a model in a mascara ad who obviously is wearing lash inserts that change the shape of her lash line. So basically they're saying, yeah, it changes the shape of her lash line. It's not a big deal. It's not false advertisement. But the government governing all of these companies are like, yeah, no, it is. So they have been called out and had suits brought against them way before this video and obviously haven't learned their lesson or else they're just riding the line of what's allowed and what's not allowed. So I really will be curious to see, are there any consequences for L'Oreal? Because at what point do we draw the line? You know, of course, as consumers, 
some responsibility falls on us to educate ourselves, to watch, you know, the influencers that we feel like we can trust or whatever. But it should not be this hard. It should not be this complicated. If there are claims made, then you should be able to trust what they're saying. And when they're adding false lashes, so basically you only get that look when you add the mascara and falsies, then I think at minimum they should include a pair of false lashes with the mascara. So, yeah, that was my rabbit hole that I fell down uh, for quite some time this evening. And then, I'm sure y'all have seen, I mean, the people at the Ulta have just made a mockery out of the situation in reference to Michaela. And it is truly overwhelming. I can't imagine if I was in her shoes how I would feel. But hopefully if she does pull out of this moving forward, she'll be better for it. And I mean, heck, look at Jacqueline Hill, all the crap she has come back from. So I do think that there's hope for Michaela. How, what that path looks like, I'm not really sure. But speaking of Jacqueline Hill, I'm working on a longer extensive video and come across, does anybody remember when she came out with volume two of her Jacqueline Hill X Mor Morphe palette that had all the pinks and purples? It, she said it's like the younger sister to her first palette. And she said the formula was the exact same formula. And then it come out, no, it wasn't the same formula. Like, I have forgotten about so many of these indiscretions that she just straight up lied about. Um, and in fact, on that palette, so Jen Loves had addressed it way back that even her original palette, when they came out with a new drop of the palette, the number one, at some point, the formula had changed. Because I think she had the original Jaclyn Hill palette that was the white X Morphe palette. And so she compared hers because the sister-in-law, I believe it was her sister-in-law or friend, hated the Jaclyn palette. And she's like, wait, what? So by comparing the two, she realized that, wait, these are the same colors. This is the same palette, but it's not the same formula. So anyway, y'all wait for that video. It's going to be a good one. It's taken me a little time to put all the pieces together and the timelines and Ooh, some days I go buggy because every little chance I get, I'm working on it. But hopefully in the next couple weeks, I'll have it all put together um, for y'all. Anyway, I'm going to leave this one here. I'll meet y'all in the comments. And I hope y'all have a good week coming up. And I'll see you in my next video.